In this video, I'll show you how to create different backgrounds with Superimpose X. I'll show you how to create the classic black background that's popular for flowers. But I'll also show you how to create black and white or blurred backgrounds as well. So let's start by choosing Superimpose, which is the double balloon icon. And we open up and select the flower that we want to work on. Once you have that imported as a layer, what I usually do is I duplicate the layer. And uh, now I'm going to start masking out the layer. The, my favorite masking tool is the magic wand. So I start from any corner and start tracing the outline slowly. I'm keeping my eye on the magnified cursor, but uh, you really don't have to be too precise with the magic wand because in Superimpose X it does a fairly good job of edge detection and especially in this image I think we have a good contrast between the flower and the leaves in the background so I'm confident it's going to give a good result so here I am again slowly tracing the outline And now we are about to complete the loop. Once the loop is complete, I hit the small check mark at the bottom and the layer has been masked separately. Uh, I'm going to click on just show this current layer only and we can see that there's a clean mask of the flower. In order to make sure that the mask is clear, I'm going to cycle click on the eye icon and cycle through a few different colored backgrounds just to show you that the mask is clean. Now that the mask is clean, the next step I want to do is import a black uh, layer, a solid colored layer as the background for the flower. So I'm picking on colors on the top and then from the colors uh, right now I have a gradient uh, type of background selected so I'm going to choose a solid color and choose black and uh, click OK. Now I've got the layer I'm going to make it fit to the background by using the transform fit to base. Now I choose my flower layer which was masked and bring it on top and as you can see here you have the black background flower ready. What I decided to do at this point is to crop the flower into a square shape which maybe I should have done in the beginning. So I chose a square aspect ratio and I have now cropped the flower to a, a square shape and I'm going to save it as a high quality JPEG image to my camera roll. So now we have the black background flower ready and complete. Now what I'm going to do is to choose a different colored background. Because my flower is a yellow orange shade on the color wheel, I want to choose the opposite color on the color wheel which is a purple blue kind of shade. So I've chosen a bluish uh, purple color and I've chosen a radial gradient type of pattern. I'm just going to tweak the colors a little bit by moving my finger on the color picker so you can see the cursor is moving. Once I'm satisfied with the color that I've chosen, I imported it as a new layer into the picture. I double click and fit back to base so now I have it as a background. I once again drag the flower layer on top and now I can export this image as a flower with a colored background. So now this is ready and complete. For this next image that I plan to create, I'm going to duplicate the base layer. And once I've duplicated it, I'm going to drag and drop it right underneath the masked flower. Once this is done, I'm going to choose from my 
edit filters I'm going to choose color and I'm going to desaturate the background layer and now I can save it as a JPEG file so I have yet another interesting option which is like a color pop or color splash programs uh, they often create this type of effect now I have yet once again duplicated the background and now I choose from my tools in the bottom I've chosen a focus blur and under focus blur I'm there are options like radial or linear which is uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now under linear you can adjust the distance by pinching and uh, expanding with your fingers how much area is going to be affected by the blur and uh, Apart from this, or you also have the radial blur, which I'm showing right now. So there are three different types of blurs under the focus blur option. Once you, and you can make the uh, linear one also angular. I like this option the best. So I think I'm going to select this. And now I've created a third variation of the image where the background has been blurred and I saved it to the camera roll.